To begin your Microsoft Word Module 1 project, we'll go into our MindTap website and open up your Word folder. Then you will open up the Word Module 1, Creating and Modifying a Flyer. You will choose the first option there, which is Word Module 1 SAM Textbook Project. When we click on that, it will open up the um, information screen about this module. Um, sometimes you will see uh, an exclamation mark up here, um, just giving you a warning uh, about the specific project. Um, so like this one, it's not compatible with Office for Mac, so you have to use a Windows computer to complete this project. Um, you will have three attempts to submit each of your textbook projects or homework projects um, throughout the semester. Um, so we're going to click the start button. This is the screen that you will come up to when you first open up the um, textbook project. The reading here is um, the textbook for Word Module 1, Creating and Modifying a Flyer. You can click on this link if you would like and this will download a offline copy for you to use of um, your Word Module 1 textbook. Um, so if you are needing to um, conserve your Wi-Fi um, in either because of um, size or um, minutes then you can download this and um, just use it offline. So that's what that first part um, does. Um, the second one is your start file. And so you'll notice that each of your start files when you're using a textbook project will be named pretty much the same. This is new Microsoft Word document and then it should have your name there. So it, you will have to use these start files um, because when you submit them back into SAM it's going to make sure that you have that start file. Um, my machine is set up to save. I have to name it when I save a download folder. So you probably won't get that little screen that I just had. Um, we are going to also have to click on the support file. Most of your assignments throughout this semester will have a support file that goes with them. So occasionally you won't, but um, we'll just download this. And I think mine will open it up here on my screen. Um, so I'll just save that as well. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click the Continue button here. This is the screen that will show up um, when you are ready to submit your project. Uh, most of the time, the amount of time that it takes you to complete a project will autom it will automatically log you out of um, the Cengage website because of you have you've been inactive for too long um, because we're not actually doing any of this work in Cengage it's all in Microsoft Office on our computer so I, I say that because you will be logged out when you log back in and you come into your SAM textbook project it will bring you to this um, screen which is step two of two and I'll go through that with you when we get ready to submit um, as well but I go ahead and have you come to this page because this is the expected file name that you're going to need for this file when you get ready to submit it so instead of having to type all of that out um, if you come over and select it all and then you can either use control C to copy or you can choose right click and copy and when you right click, you do have to bank your mouse inside that blue highlighted area, and then you'll be able to right click. Um, if you click outside of that area, um, sometimes you, okay, well, it looks like you can get that too. Um, I don't think you were able to do that in the, in other previous times. So, um, all right, so we've got our stuff downloaded. We've got our file name copied. And what I'm going to do um, right now is I am going to close out of this 
textbook project um, because that will take me back into my Cengage mind tap where I see um, my list of um, or my outline view. Um, I'm sorry for those of you that are working in your calendar view let me just go over there it's going to be very very similar um, but what you'll see here is um, these are things that I've I've changed the due date on for today because I had some issues with times yesterday. So I'm going to scroll down to week four, which is when your word module one information is due. Um, so if you're using this view, you'll just click right here on your word module one textbook project to get exactly where we were before. Um, this is where you'll go to use your um, textbook. And so what we have to do is we have to go through the textbook, and this is just kind of the introduction. It tells you all the objectives, uh, or all the different parts that we're going to learn in this module. Um, so you're going to have to work through the textbook to be able to complete the project. Um, I'm just going to scroll through these first pages here. Um, so this is a, a kind of a, an overview of our project. You're going to be creating a flyer that looks very similar to this. And I will warn you not to just use this picture and try to create um, a replica of it because you will miss lots of lo lots and lots of small details um, that need to be done in order to get your assignment done correctly. Um, then down here, it just tells you these are the general tasks that you're going to have as you proceed through this project. Whenever you begin a new um, application, so Excel or Access, um, it's going to give you kind of a starting point of what you can expect in Word or Excel or whatever. So that's what these next few pages will be. Um, and so this is just telling you how to get started in Word and you really don't need to worry about that because you should just be opening up this um, new document that they gave us. Um, and so you really shouldn't have to worry about how to open up Word. It should just open up by itself. But if you are a person that goes to Microsoft Word to open it up, you can do that as well and then open this file. It doesn't matter. Um, it'll it'll be fine either way um, okay let me go back to the textbook here so um, the beginning it's always going to take you through the window which this is something that I will cover in class um, so if you're an online student and you're not in the class you'll want to make sure that you go over these pages here and are familiar with all the terms that um, are used for the Microsoft Word um, window and all the different parts of it. All right, so those are just getting you through the um, screen. So our first task here is to adjust the margins. Um, and let me go back one screen just to make sure. Okay, yeah, so they're just wanting you to make sure you are in to print layout view um, and they have you change your zoom to 100% and make sure that the ruler is showing. Those are not specific things that are going to be graded, so we don't necessarily need to worry about those. I can't tell you for sure which ones will and won't be graded um, throughout. I just know for this particular one, those won't be. Um, but this is where we'll start. So, um, you may see in some parts of your textbook that there are things that have been highlighted in um, in orange. Um, those are kind of just helpful helpful things to know. Um, you are going to want to look for the the orange rectangles that are numbered, though. And this is what you are expected to do to complete the project to make it look like the end result um, that we saw in that picture previously. Um, so what you'll have to do if you only have one computer is you'll have to read your directions here. So I want to go to the layout um, tab on the ribbon and then I'm going to go into the margins and I want to choose narrow as this, the preset for my margins. So I'll come over here to my Microsoft Word document 
And because I've already opened this and it was a downloaded file, uh, Microsoft Word makes you choose the enable editing so that you um, are, are saying that you're, you know this is a safe file to go ahead and open up. Okay, so what we want to do first is remember we saved or we copied that file name that we want. So that's the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, click on our file tab and then we're going to go down to save as and this is where you will want to uh, make sure that you navigate to the location where you can find your document when you get ready to submit it. Um, so I'm just going to use the browse option here and that is going to open up um, this save as window. So right now um, my my path is I'm on this PC and I'm on the C drive, I'm in users and this, and I'm in a downloads folder. That is not really where I would suggest saving um, your information because one, you got lots of stuff to go through. Um, so um, you can choose one of the, the quick options here with the documents. Um, if you are a desktop saving person, I would not recommend that, but you can always go to the desktop and then um, create a folder there. You'll see I don't have a whole lot of, of folders there. I usually put mine somewhere else. So um, I do have some things in my in a Google Drive. I don't usually use a Google Drive, so those are in there accidentally. Um, but I should have a school folder here. I'm not exactly sure. No, that's in my document. So what I basically did was I went into that documents um, option that was over there on the left hand side and then I created a folder and I called it school folders so if you're not you should know how to create a folder if you've gone through the um, uh, previous assignments um, but you can either choose a new folder option up here um, or if you're used it for a while you can always do a right click and choose new and choose the folder option from there as well. Um, but I would encourage you to create a folder and then once you have chosen to create it, it will it will highlight it so it will give you the opportunity to um, to rename it. Um, and so I would suggest naming this CSIS 115 and then put all of your work for this semester in that folder. Um, so once you have that named, then you can open that up. And then we have our file name down here that was a default file name. If you click on that file name, it will highlight all of it. And then you can choose to paste by doing a right click. Let me get that select again. So you can do a right click in your um, file name bar down here. And then you can choose paste. Or with it all highlighted, you can also just do Control V on your keyboard. Either of those will work. So now we should have the correct file name that we want. And we'll click the Save button. What you will see change on your window is up here on what's called the title bar, you will see that your file name is now named what we just put in as a paste of the, the title that we want. Um, I know that um, I didn't go over the window screen with you earlier. Um, just in case some of you um, don't see this in class, um, you this is called your title bar up here. I'm just going to give you a real quick rundown here. There's lots of other stuff on the title bar um, that you'll want to become familiar with if you're not already. Um, the one thing you'll probably use the most is what's called the quick access toolbar that's located over here. And then you have what's called the ribbon. The ribbon has different tabs in it. Um, the file takes you to what's called the backstage view. Um, the home tab, insert, all of these have different um, options, of um, steps that we can use, tasks that we can use to complete projects as we go through. Um, and then your ruler should be showing, um, and I'm only showing one page right now. 
um, and this is at 100%, but it's kind of small, so I like to make my big one. My eyesight is not as great as it used to be, and it's just easier for me if I make it bigger. So I like to make it a little bigger, you can see. Um, so the first thing that we were going to do before I went through saving all of that stuff is we need to change our margins. So if you remember that from the textbook that we were looking at. So I'm going to go to the um, design tab. No, nope, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to the layout tab. Um, and in the layout tab, I will go over to the margins button. And then um, we are going to use this narrow for um, the preset uh narrow settings for our margins. Now, if you fail to do this step, you will not be able to fit everything on the one page document that you're going to create for this project. So you need to make sure you get that first step. So if you're going back and forth um, with your textbook, then you're going to have to flip back to the textbook, go to the next page, find um, what we're needing to do next, which is entering text. So we'll go to the next screen or the next page in our textbook and they tell us to type wash your hands with an exclamation point. I point out that you need to use the exclamation point because a lot of people leave that off and then they get this counted wrong because they just left off the exclamation mark. Once we type that, then we're going to press the enter key and then we'll come back and find out what our next step is. So we'll type wash your hands and then make sure we put that exclamation point in there. Now I am going to um, stop going back and forth between the textbook and the Word document. I'm going to use another device that has a textbook on it um, and I'm going to use that um, to continue through with these steps so I'm not having to flip back and forth all the time. So once we have um, our washer hands and then we're going to press the enter key after that so that we're on a new line. Um, one of the steps that I probably oh, um, yeah, that I probably skipped over earlier was um, turning, oh, maybe I didn't. i got to get to the right place here in the textbook. Um, okay, wash your hands, exclamation mark, and then we're going to press the enter key. And then um, our next thing is to well, they have you change the zoom. I've already done that. Um, you can change the zoom by going to the view tab. Um, and here's your zoom option. This is also where you can change it to one page or see multiple pages. Um, this will let you change it to some preset sizes. Um, you'll see mine set to 180% right now. Um, you can have yours at whatever size you want. There are a few projects that we will do where they want you to um, size the or put the zoom to a specific size um, and I think they are Excel projects so um, if just follow those directions if it's one of the last things it tells you to do you just kind of need to make sure that that's the zoom size that you're at um, but um, you can you can use it at whatever size works best for you. Um, the next thing your textbook talks about putting or uh, turning on the formatting marks. Mine already have that showing. So the formatting marks are um, the paragraph sign. Um, that's where you have pressed the enter key on your keyboard. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see where I have pressed the space bar in between the words, that is shown by a little dot. It looks like a period, but it's in the middle of the line. Um, so those are called um, formatting marks. Um, we also sometimes call them non-printing characters. Um, sometimes I like to have them on. I usually don't like to work um, when I'm 
creating a document to have them on, but when I'm going back to do some editing, um, I like to, to be able to, to turn those on and see um, where I've pressed the space bar, where I've pressed the enter key and things like that. You'll also see if you press the tab key, you'll, you'll have an arrow that shows up. There's some other non-printing characters that we'll learn as we go through. Um, so if you see something that looks different, um, check to see if your, um, it's called the show hide button in your paragraph section on the home ribbon. Um, so here's your paragraph section of the, the home ribbon. And then this, um, this is actually the sign, a proofreader sign for a paragraph. Um, so you'll sometimes see that um, if you've ever seen a document be proof, proof had proofreading marks put on it, um, you'll see a, a sign that looks similar to this. Um, this. So this is how you turn them off and on. So it's like a toggle um, button. You can turn them off and it looks normal, you turn them on and you see the non-printing characters. So um, you need to be familiar with those or to display formatting marks or to hide formatting marks. Um, those are some of the terms that you'll, you'll need to see there. So you don't have to work with it on, but um, you need to know where it is because you'll be using it quite frequently throughout the semester. Um, all right, so we are going to go ahead and start typing um, some additional information here. Um, and one thing that I want to tell you is, um, let me go back here to um, this picture of our flyer. Um, and the reason that I'm doing this is because when we start typing in this paragraph up here, um, it's going to actually type out uh, in about one line and then just a little bit more, th maybe three or four words on the next row. Um, and I'm explaining that to you because in your textbook, it the next section talks about using word wrap. And some students will look at this picture and say, well, my first line needs to end at the word decrease. And so they'll press the enter key after the word decrease. We do not want to do that. We want to be able to when we edit the document for if we for the the text in our paragraph to flow to the next line or um, back up to the previous line when we do any editing to it so you'll see at the end of this module that we're going to add some words we're going to take some words out of this first paragraph so if you press the enter key at the end of the line, then it's going to mess that all up. You're going to have to go in and take that return or that enter where you've pressed the enter key out. And then um, it, it's just a lot more work. So we're going to use the word wrap feature that um, is available in all word processing um, software. All right, let me go back into my document here. And so what we have done is we have typed our, our heading. Um, we have pressed the enter key to move us down to the next line where we would start typing. But what we want to do is leave that line blank. So we're going to press the enter key one more time. And this is where we'll start typing um, our actual document. Um, if I come back here and let you see this, um, oh, no, that's where we want to do that. Sorry, I'm thinking of the previous, um, textbooks project that we did. So anyway, so we have this blank, we've pressed our enter key. And so here's where we're going to type our first paragraph. So we'll start with watching.
All right, so uh, apologize for my typing um, there. I'm not the, the best typist when I have all this stuff around my computer. So um, now I will tell you, Sam is very specific, very particular about grading all these um, words that you type in, all the spacing that you put in there. So when you have the paragraph, um, the non-printing characters showing, you want to just double check and make sure that you don't have two dots between um, your words. However, if I go to the next paragraph here, anytime you do, it's going to give you, um, it's, it's a double underline that just brings your attention to um, a grammar. Is this, is this correct? Is this what you want? So you can always correct it by using that or just going in and taking out that extra space that you have there. Um, so very particular, make sure you type correctly. Make sure you have S's on the end of words that are, are plural. Make sure you have commas. Make sure you have apostrophes um, everywhere. They need to be periods. People forget periods. Um, and a lot of times when we're doing a very simple um, text like this, um, people will get the, the for and from, or the from and form. They'll swap those around and get a lot of transposed stuff um, that affects the grading. So just double check that your um, typing is as good as it can be. So once we have our first sentence there, then we'll press our enter key, which takes us down here to our next blank line. Um, and in your textbook, it talks a little bit there about the spell check. Um, the wavy, a wavy red line is going to be that you have something spelled wrong. That blue um, double underline that I just showed you is a could be incorrect grammar grammar of some kind. Um, then you will see a gold dotted underline, which indicates that word can present a suggestion for more concise writing. So you might see that every once in a while. It doesn't look very gold to me. It looks more like a brown, um, but it probably just depends on your screen um, as well. So um, if you're unfamiliar with using the spell check, um, sometimes it is available up here on your um, quick access toolbar. Um, I have taken it off of mine, um, but it's also in your review tab. So most of you guys have probably used spell check enough that um, you know the um, shortcut key for that, which I think is, um, Oh, they've changed this to the editor key. Oh, um, I missed that last semester. Probably because I just did the F7 like most people do to do spell check. So the editor button on your review toolbar or review ribbon um, does check for spelling, grammar, and writing suggestions. So once we are done typing in our stuff, we can use that editor tab you will see that it shows up over here um, in this little task pane over here. Um, you have finished review. So we can just close out of that. We can close out of the editor so it's not taking up room on our screen. Um, and then um, we are going to make sure we are at this insertion point where our blank line of text um, is, and then we are going to type the word how, question mark. We'll press our enter key to go to a new paragraph. Now, if you're following along in your textbook, they have you type the word clean incorrectly. C-L-E-N. Um, And the reason that they have you do that is so that you can see how the spell check works with the wavy red line. So after we have mistyped the word clean, you'll see that it does have this wavy red line here. Um, and so um, you can then right click on the word 
and it will bring up the spelling and you can choose clean from that list there or you can just go back and type the a in which is what i do sometimes so um but that's just a little bit about how the spell check will work for you so these uh this section of our um flyer is going to be um numbered or bulleted i can't remember um and so we are going to just have a line of text and then we'll press our enter key and we'll start the next paragraph so if you um are not a doctor or a nurse and don't know the proper lathering hands steps i think this might be it so um, make sure you get the palms back below the nails between the fingers and around the thumbs um, and most of us probably in the last year have become much better hand washers than we were prior to a year ago um, Which is probably not a bad thing. Um, I think we just get in a hurry a lot of times and just get it in and out. All right, so um, our next paragraph is going to be to scrub hands for at least 20 seconds. Now, um, it does have you type the word for incorrectly. Um, we'll see if that grammar catches it. And then our next one is dry hands. Well, Using a towel or or an air dryer. Okay, so um, this is the same problem that I had last semester when I did this. We typed the word hands for F O R E, um, and it should flag that with a grammatical error and have. Um, the blue dots underneath it it's not doing that um, so um, we can try using the editor seeing what happens with that um, so it looks like there's just one spelling error which is okay the double use of or um, and so we want to um, delete the repeated word. And then the other is conciseness. Um, so apparently this version does not like rinse soap off of. So they want us to just use, um, Which one do they have us take out? I want to make sure I get the right one. Rinse soap up off. So we just want to use off. If I just read it, that would help, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, so it didn't it didn't flag the word for with the e on it. So if you type that, we'll have to go back in and remove that e. Um, ourselves uh, it may just be my spell checker but I don't know so um, again we we had to fix the word clean if you didn't do type that one properly make sure you take that E off of the four um, rinse soap off hands and then um, if you type the double or there make sure you got rid of that second or
Um, your textbook shows you how you can go through um, just by using your mouse and doing that, but it's kind of good to know how that editor works too, especially if you're someone that has used that F7 key in the past. If you press that, you're going to get the screen like what I showed um, just a little while ago. Okay, so this um, is the the where we're going to leave a blank line to have um, room to put our picture in that we downloaded here um, from our um, SimGage site. Um, we're not going to insert it right now. We're going to leave a blank line and we'll put it in later. So we're going to go ahead and continue typing. So we're going to press the enter key. We'll press it one more time and that's going to leave us a blank line to come back to. And then we're going to add um, the second part of this. And we're going to type the word when question mark. Press the enter key. And so this is going to tell us every time that we should be washing our hands. These are not complete sentences. They're just thoughts. So we are not putting punctuation at the end of them. I think this must be the one that we're just using bullet bulleted information. Um, So that's the last of the bulleted items. Um, and the next line that we're going to type is what's called the signature line. Um, so we are just going to type visit www.foodworkers.com. So this period at the end of this line is also a punctuation that gets left off a lot and, and people get counted off for not having all of that punctuation. Um, so if once you do submit your project and you get your score back, um, if you are counted off and it says like a paragraph is not there or um, a sentence is not there, um, you need to check for punctuation. You need to check for uh, correct spelling, you need to check for correct spacing. Um, all of those things will be what you need to look for if it says that it can't find it, it's not there. Um, so our flyer, um, I make this a little bit smaller, it refers to these different sections in your um, when you get ready to do some formatting of this. So our headline is what's up here at the top says wash your hands and then the body copy is what we've just typed here and then the last line is what's called a signature line okay, in your textbook um, the next section talks about um, navigating through a document so you'll want to um, read through that it shows you how you can move um, your insertion point with your keyboard. So sometimes if you are typing and you have uh, you have your hands already on your keyboard, people like to just keep them there instead of having to, to get off the keyboard, go to the mouse and, and move the mouse around. So make sure you read through some of those in those different tables and you might find one or two that's helpful. I, I use a few of them. I don't use all of them, but if you read through them and you try them out and you're like, oh, that's really nice, I like that, I'm going to try to remember that one, then um, that's that's how you learn the ones you like or don't 
think you'll ever use. So, okay, the next section in your textbook has you save your document for the first time. And it goes through and talks about how to save the file, what the file name is, and all of that. And it gives you a file name to use that is different than what we already named this. And the reason that they um, have it named differently is because um, some students don't use the Cengage MindTap. Um, they just use the SAM program. So um, they're, named, they're named differently depending on the um, software that's being used. So just skip past that. Um, if you want, though, you can go ahead and click the Save um, icon up here on the Quick Access Toolbar, or you can do Control-S, but typically your machine's set to auto-save um, at certain times anyway, so um, you shouldn't really have to worry about that, but it's never a bad thing to go ahead and hit the Save button. And you do want to make sure you hit that Save button before you close for the last time. Don't rely on that auto-save stuff. Um, section 1-6 talks about formatting paragraphs and characters. You will need to know the difference between paragraph formatting and character formatting. Um, and I'll cover this in, in the class um, as well, but I'll go ahead and, and talk about it here a little bit. Um, paragraph formatting is formatting that's going to affect an entire paragraph. So since all of these are like single line paragraphs, all I have to do is select a line and and uh, paragraph formatting will be uh, applied to the entire line or entire paragraph. Um, character formatting is what um, you will use where you can change one character, you can change one word, you can change a set of words or a group of words, you can change an entire line. Um, so what you can do with um, character formatting refers to what you would do to make a change to only one character or more, as the case could be. So here, um, changing it to bold, making it a, a larger font size, those are things that are um, you're going to be your character formatting. Um, things like paragraph formatting, that would be centering an entire paragraph, um, indenting. Um, the way you can tell, um, an easy way to tell is anything in this paragraph section is going to be paragraph formatting options. Anything in the font section is usually going to be, or usually can be applied to just one character. Doesn't mean that it's always applied to one character, but it could be. Um, the next part of your textbook, it's 1-6a, talks about font, font sizes, and themes. Um, I will not go over this every time, but it is almost, um, I believe it is noted in, if it's not every module, it's every application. It goes over what the font is, it's the typeface, it's the font size, it's referred to as a single point. The single point is 11 70 seconds um, of an inch, which is one sixth of an inch, so it's not very big. You can get 11, I'm sorry, you can get what, six of those in um, about an inch. So uh, that's how you can think of uh, a point size is if, so 72 point font is going to be one inch in height. That's all you really kind of need to keep in mind. So if you're going half of that, 36, 36 point font is going to be about a half an inch. Don't really need to know that. I just kind of like to clarify that for people. So you kind of have an idea of what size you're, you're looking at when you're doing um, either 72, 36, 10, 12 point font, stuff like that. But it also talks in there about a style. Um, we will be using some styles. Styles are, um, preset styles are on the home ribbon here. Um, and um, so styles is just a, a named collection of character and paragraph formatting. Um, so 
you can see up here as you hold your mouse over some of these um, and because we have a live preview it it adjusts um, paragraph and character formatting that is in each of these styles um, will be applied automatically to wherever your mouse is for that live preview um, so that's just what you'll keep in mind about styles is the those are the preset ones and they we'll be using those throughout the semester in in different uh, different applications sometimes they're not always called styles sometimes they're called quick styles or a different version of it but um any anytime you have a named group of stuff it's referred to as a style um there's also what's called a document theme this allows you to change for the entire document the fonts any formatting um, the colors that are available, um, other things, and there's just lots of different things that can be changed by document themes. So when we get into um, go change the document theme, I'll kind of point more of those things out to you. All right, so they ask us to do control home, and that's a key combination on your um, keyboard that will take you to the very beginning of your document. So my cursor should be at the very end after the word after the word tips in the period. Um, and because I want to go back to the beginning of my document, I can hit the control and the home key. Now the control and the home key um, Depending on your keyboard, um, like I'm using a, a laptop computer right now, so my home key is has to be used in conjunction with a function key. So if control home is not working for you and you're using a laptop of some kind, um, you may need to see if the home key is actually um, a key that has two um, jobs and you may need to use the function key in conjunction with the home key to get it to, to work. So for instance, I had to do function, con control, function, and home all at the same time to get mine to work. So just keep that in mind um, if it doesn't work for you when you when you originally try it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change the theme. And we're gonna do that by going to the design tab on the ribbon. And here you will see that there are some, um, these are what it calls document formatting. Um, so you will see as you move your mouse across those that, that they change um, as well based on the settings of each of those. But we're going to go to the far left hand side and we're going to choose the themes button. When you click on the drop down arrow, you will see many different options of themes available. If you are not seeing the theme that we need, you may need to use the scroll bar to scroll down. Sometimes um, we don't see the one that we want for some reason. Hopefully that's not as much of a problem for us at home as it was in our lab. In the lab, sometimes we had some issues finding the exact one that we wanted. Um, we are wanting to find the slate theme and um, so we should be able to find that. I think these are in alphabetical order, but th no, they're not. So, um, but we're gonna find the slate theme. And now, um, before you actually click on the slate theme, if you kind of watch your, your document that you already have created here, um, I'm gonna go back to the home tab here real quick. So right here, it tells me that I'm using Calibri font and this is a body, Calibri body font. Um, so it's not a heading or a, a, anything, a footnote or anything like that. Um, it's an 11 point font um, and it is left justified. So when I go back into my design tab and I go into find slate, so here's what it looks like when I just created it and typed it from scratch. And if I come over here to Slate, you'll see that the biggest change I see is I'm going from what's called a sans serif font to a serif font. And 
you will probably read about that somewhere, but um, let me go ahead and, and move up to the word slate here. And I want you to look at the W. The W, at the top of the W, do you see how it has lines that go across it that kind of make it look like it's all connected up there at the top? If you look at the bottom of the Y, um, you'll see that the bottom of the Y has like a little um, platform that it's it's standing on. And you'll see that at the bottom of the H's, the N's. Um, so the, this is what's called a serif font. It has a serif to it. It has little feet or um, dashes at the bottom and tops of certain letters. Um, so obviously like your O's and your A's are not going to have those um, those things that are curved, the E's. Um, if I undo my thing there, this is what it was originally. This is Calibri. This is called a non-serif font. So it doesn't have those little feet or, or lines on them. Um, so that's the difference between serif and sans serif. So we're going from a sans serif font to a serif font. Uh, sometimes people think the serif fonts, because they have the little lines at the bottom, help you help your eye move across the line um, faster and it's easier to read. I don't necessarily always agree with that. It just kind of depends on the font and the size of the font anymore. Okay, so now that we have our slate theme um, selected, um, the other thing that it will change is your your colors. Um, so let me hit my undo button here, and I'm going to go back to my home. Um, this is where we'll change the font color, and we haven't got there yet, but this is this is what it will look like. And I'd like to go ahead and explain this um, color palette that we have here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and change the, the um, document theme back to what it's supposed to be. But this is back into the original. Um, probably this is called the office theme or something. So um, in every design theme, you will have theme colors. Um, the first column is going to be um, a background color. So this is called white background one. And you can't see the word white, but it's underneath the arrow there. The next option is going to be a secondary background option. So typically our first background option is always going to be white because we're working in a Word document, which is usually going to be on white paper if we were to print it. Um, so a secondary background would be um, black. Or I'm sorry, that's just black text, doesn't it? Okay. Um, they've changed that because it used to be two backgrounds. And then this is, oh, this is your secondary background. They switched those around. Um, so this is a light gray background. So it says light gray, comma, background two. And I say that because as you go through this textbook, textbook you will see when you need to change a color, um, it is very specific about the how it is worded and so you have to make sure you get the right one and then the next one is a secondary text option and this is light gray um, so those are the first four columns uh, two backgrounds and two text options the next six colors um, you could refer to as the theme accent colors so if you need to change a color it will it will say blue accent one or orange accent two green accent six now it's not always going to be that easy because they have to make it difficult <laughs> so um, you'll see that there's a blank space underneath your theme colors so this is what your theme color will look like if it's a 100% of the theme color the variants in the little table below go from um, the accent colors are lighter 80%. So it takes this orange color and it lightens it 80% and you get the results that you see in the first row of these accent colors. 
or of the vari variants. Um, so the six colors at the end are called accent colors. And then um, the variants are lighter 80%, lighter 60%, lighter 40%. Then your last two are darker. So you have darker 25% and darker 50%. So that is how you will understand your color palettes. Um, and I wanted to show you these because I'm going to go back and change it to the correct theme that we're supposed to have. And all of these colors will change. What will always remain constant are the standard colors. Before, I think it was Office 90 or Office, Microsoft Office 2016, maybe 2013. Before that, um, you, when you wanted to change colors, you just had these standard colors that came up. You could to go to more colors and get some different colors, but these were your standard colors. So occasionally you are going to be asked to use the standard blue color. So no, there are three different blues. So this is the blue color. This is, I think, called light blue. You have a green color and you have a light green. So if you're asked to use a standard orange, you need to make sure you come to the standard colors and select the orange. Hopefully that is enough explanation about the color palette that you'll be successful in getting the correct color um, as you go through and, and make those choices. So keep in mind here that we have accent color blue, orange, gray, this is called gold and then we have a different blue and a green so I'm going to go back to my design tab and I'm going to change my theme back to slate like it's supposed to be so not only did we change from this sans serif to the serif font but if I go back to my home ribbon now and I try to change my colors well look I still have um, a background, a text, background, a text, but then all of my accent colors have changed as well. Um, so, but if you look at the standard colors, they are all the same that they were before. So if you get to a point where it's asking you to apply coloring of any kind, whether it be a shading, whether it be a glow, whether it be an outline, any of those things, if you do not find the color that you're supposed to be finding in Accent 3. This is called Tan Accent 3. Um, if it's supposed to be Orange Accent 3 and it's showing up as Tan Accent 3, you do not have the correct theme selected or you do not have the correct colors selected because you don't have to change the theme if you don't want to um, for it, to be able to get different colors. You can keep the theme that you have. You can come over here to the colors and change from wherever I am. I can't, I don't know, to any of these other color options. So that's a different way. That's another way you can change colors um, without having to use an entirely different theme. So just keep that in mind. Um, but you have to make sure you have the colors changed or and or the theme changed in order to get the correct colors in your color palette. All right, so we're going to go back to the home ribbon, the home tab. And we want to make sure our insertion point is somewhere in this top row. Wash your hands. Um, and we want to center this paragraph. So we're going to come up here and use the justification uh, for center. And you'll notice the shortcut key is control E. So you can just use control E if you want, or you can click the center option in that paragraph section of the home ribbon. Um, we're going to go down to the um, next paragraph which is washing your hands. And again, we're going to center that paragraph. Now I know it looks a little funny right now, but we will make some adjustments to it so that it looks good um, when we get to the end. In one 
dash 6 f it shows you how to select a, an entire line at a time so what you're going to need to do is take your insertion point which is typically looking like an i beam whenever you're in your word document you're going to move it out here to the left margin when you get your i beam into the left margin it will change from the i beam to a white arrow that points back to the right when you are lined up with the line you want to select, in my case, wash your hands, then you can click the left or click the arrow when it's white and over here in the left margin. And that selects the entire line for you. And here we're going to change the font to um, a 36 point font. Um, so we can come up here to the font section and change it to 36. Um, and we're going to still do some more changes here. So don't deselect that. We're going to come up here to our um, font style and we're going to change that from the Callisto to um, Rockwell Extra Bold. Now, instead of having to use the scroll to go all the way down here or scroll with my mouse, when it shows up in blue, highlighted blue up here, you can just type Rockwell um, and then we can even do Extra and it will bring up Rockwell Extra Bold. Um, so we can go ahead and select that and now your headline or your head heading here will be um, changed to that Rockwell Extra Bold font and it should be 36 point. We're also going to change the case so that it's not upper lower case it's going to be all uppercase. So hopefully you have this still this line still selected if not you can come over here to your left margin to select it. And then in our font section, we have a button that has a large A and a small A on it. We're going to use that drop down arrow and we are going to choose the option that says uppercase. So now our entire heading, our headline has been changed to uppercase. With this um, heading still selected, we are going to apply what is called a text effect. Uh, text effect is an option that is not available to you prior to the 2016 version. Um, and you may not have all of the same text effects, which is why it's important to use it, the 2019 version. So um, if you haven't got that installed, make sure you read those directions on how to get that installed so that you're, you have all the correct um, choices that you need. So while I have my wash your hands selected, I'm going to come to my font section and there is an, a capital letter A that looks like it's white and has a blue outline around it. So I'm going to click the drop down arrow for that. There are some preset options for us here um, and again you're just going to have to hold your mouse on them uh, this is a gradient fill brown it's using accent color 4 it's outlined with a brown accent color 4 so you see all the different vari variants that can be there so this is what's called text effects we are going to use the fill white and sometimes this is difficult to determine which one you want so make sure you're looking at the pictures in your textbook um, but when it says fill white you can kind of um, disregard all of them except this fourth column here because these are all have white fill in them and then we want this the fourth column the second row which is fill white outline brown and it's using accent color one. So we'll click on that and now our text has changed to have that text effect. I'm 
Okay, and so I'm going to click outside of this paragraph just to show you that this next um, change that we make is a paragraph formatting change. So you don't have to have the entire paragraph selected. You just have to be somewhere in that paragraph. So we're going to put our insertion point somewhere in the paragraph, and then we're going to come up to the paragraph section, because remember paragraph formatting should be in, found in the paragraph section somewhere. We're going to use the shade um, button. The shading button is what has a, what looks like a little paint can tipping over. So we're going to click down on the um, shading color arrow and we want to choose brown accent for darker 25 percent. So if I know that six is the last accent color, it might be easier to go back from there. So I have accent color four, but I want darker 25%. So I have to go down next to the last one. Remember the last one is darker 50%. So I'm going to go right above that. So I should have brown accent four, darker 25%. And it usually does show you in your textbook that it's the eighth color in the fifth row. So you can always count that up if you need to also. We are going to make some changes to our next paragraph, which is the washing your hands with soap and water paragraph. Let me make this smaller so we can see it. Um, we want to select the entire paragraph. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can click and drag through all of it. Um, you can use your um, option that we just learned here where you put your mouse out in the left-hand margin and click and drag through it all. Um, you can also, inside your um, it's anywhere inside this paragraph, you can do a triple click with your mouse, your left mouse button. Um, you may or may not have caught that. A double click will do a word. A triple click will do an entire paragraph. Now, whenever you do a, a triple click um, or whenever you click and drag through it, I want you to notice since I still have my, my show hide marks, are um, showing here that I have so I have selected um, the paragraph sign after this. So if I were going to move this to another location in my um, document here, I would um, have a paragraph return that is going with it as well. So sometimes you have to watch the instructions that are given, and it will tell you to select the paragraph but not the return at the end um, and so if you're not able to make that happen just by clicking and dragging um, you can have it selected hold your shift key down and use your arrow keys to the left or the right or up or down to um, change the selection by one character at a time if you want to um, here it doesn't matter. We can select the paragraph um, marker at the end, and that is okay. So we have our triple click. We have this selected. And then what we're going to do is we are going to um, – well, I thought we were going to center that. Okay, um, but we're actually going to change this to, okay, so I have this selected, and we're going to change this to, um, good grief, where did it go? Okay, so I found my place here. All right, so with our paragraph selected, we're going to go to the font color, and we are going to choose um, column 5, which is accent color 5. I'm sorry, this is column 9, actually. Um, so we're going to go down, and this is actually called red. So this is red accent 5, 
Um, and we're going to go to the darker 25%. So we'll go down here. This is column 9. Um, I don't know what, how many rows that is. but So we're going to make that the it's a darker 25%. It's called a red color. It looks very brown on my computer screen. But um, With this text still selected, we're going to change the font size to 22. Um, most of you will probably come up here to your font section of your ribbon and do that. Um, I do want to show you, you can also do a right click. You get what's called this um, shortcut menu that pops up here. Now, this is the shortcut menu, and this is your mini toolbar. Sorry, I'll get it right here. Um, so in your mini toolbar, you will see that you can change the font size um, here as well. So you can either use your drop-down font options to change in the increments that's shown there. Um, the increments that are shown there, um, what starts at 11, so then it goes to 12, 14, 16, and so on. Now, just to the right of that drop-down arrow, you have a, a large A with an up-pointing arrow and a smaller A with a down-pointing arrow. These are buttons that will increase your font size or decrease your font size, and they are based on the increments that you see here. So, right now, this is an 11-point font. So, if I want it to be a 22-point font, I can come to the Increase My Font Size and do it this way. I can also come here and change it to 22 point this way. So it doesn't really matter how you get it done. You can use your mini toolbar, you can use your regular toolbar. Um, however, as long as it's 22 point um, in size, that is what we need. All right, the next section has you change the zoom so you can see all of your document on your screen. And we're going to select multiple lines at a time. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see the lines that I need to select. Um, so I am going to select the, the message part. So it's going to start with the word how. It's going to go down to the equipment or garbage. Um, we are not getting the um, signature line that's at the bottom of this. So while we have all of those selected, we're going to change this font size to 20. Then we are going to select the rows, or I'm sorry, the paragraphs that are under the question how, or the word how with a question mark. So we'll come out here to the left margin and we can use our white arrow and just click down through all of those. Um, once we have all of those selected, then we are going to come up to the paragraph section um, and we are going to choose the numbering tab. So um, the bullet tab is the top left one and the number tab is just to the right of that. And we are going to um, just click on that button and it will automatically put the, the numeric values in there. Anytime you press the enter key, it will start a new number. So. We have five paragraphs there. Um, and we decided that's not what we want it to look like, so we're going to undo this. We, we made a mistake. We want to make a change. So we can come up to our Quick Access Toolbar, and we can use the Undo button there. You can also do Control-Z on your keyboard, um, which is what I like to do. That's one of those things that is a, that was an easy learn for me, and so I have just used, continued using Control-Z to cut or get rid of information. Control Y will put it back in there or like your redo. Um, but with our um, paragraphs still selected here, we have decided that we want them to have um, bullets with them. Oh, no, that's the win. Okay. All right, we are going to redo this. So we'll click our redo button and it goes back to the numbers, which is what we want. Then we're going to click or select the paragraphs after the word when. And here we are going to use our bullets. So um, 
in our paragraph section where we have the bullets. We'll click on that and it will put the little rect or circular bullet um, at the beginning of each of those. There is a section in your textbook, 1-6U, uh, talks about auto formatting as you type, um, which is going to get into when we put in the website down here, automatically changed um, from black text to um, a hyperlink because it's a website. So um, those are that's just an example of one of the things that the auto format as you type can, can do. Um, you may or may not have caught it earlier. I forgot to capitalize the first letter of one of the lines and the computer automatically did that for me. When you type the word and, A-D-N instead of A-N-D, it's going to automatically change that for you. So that's that's what the, the auto format as you type um, does, things like that. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get rid of that hyperlink because we it's going to be on a flyer, a piece of paper that's printed, that's put out somewhere. So it doesn't need to have that hyperlink to it. So you'll come down here to thefoodworkers.com and you can right click on that website and then in your shortcut menu that pops up here you'll see the option to remove hyperlink just click on that it's going to change it back to the regular black font um, that we have as our text while we are still in our signature line down here we are going to change this to have a center um, alignment Then we are going to come here um, on this last row, a signature line, and this we're going to select this entire row. Again, you can click and drag across it um, or use your arrow over here. We're going to change this font size to 18 point. Centered. Um, okay, um, so we have an 18 point font and then we are going to um, change the font color to red accent 5 darker 25%. Now, I think that is the color that is already here, um, but I'm not positive. So I'm going to go to red accent 5, darker 25%. And I think that was what is there. So if you know that's what is in the um, text color, and you can see by the little rectangle underneath there, um, whatever that last color was. So that's what we're going to apply to our signature line down there. And then we are going to select the word additional hand washing tips. Now this is where we are going to do this, but we do not want to get the, the period after the word tips or the paragraph sign. So with those selected, we are going to apply the underline option. So again, you can do a right click if you want to and find the U there or control U will underline um, text as well. We're going to come up to the um, first paragraph that we have here after our heading and we can double click on the word. Um, no, we just need to be somewhere in the word prevent. We don't have to have the whole word selected. And then we can do italicize. And we'll italicize the um, entire word there. Right. Now we are going to select what is called non-adjacent text. We are going to select the 
first word in each of this um, list that's numbered, this numeric list. So, where to go here? So we're going to select the word wet, and then we're going to have to hold down our control key. We'll click and drag across the word lather. We'll click and drag across the word scrub, rinse, and dry. So the first word on each of those. Um, you, and you shouldn't have the dot after them or the space um, selected. While those are all still selected, we're going to click the B for bold or control B. There's another table in your textbook on how to select text that will talk about the um, double clicking, triple clicking, tell you how to select different text option items there. Um, this next section talks about saving and organizing your files. So if you're not good at that, you might want to read through this section. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the save button here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get our picture inserted. We are now ready to put our picture in that we downloaded from our Cengage site. Um, so what we need to do though is we need to get um, our insertion point on that blank line that we had. So between our how and when there should be a blank line. If you need to turn your show hide, show hide um, button on to show your formatting marks you can do that you click here on the line where the picture is going to go and then we want to um, center this um, so we can just click the center control e um, and then we are going to go up to the insert tab on our ribbon we want to choose a picture and then from this device, and I know mine just went into the documents here, so I'll just put that in there. It's not something that you're going to have to keep, so it um, doesn't really matter if you have it in the correct location or not. Now, if you're going to use this um, on a different location, like if you need to save to a thumb drive or something, then you need to worry about it. So, all right, as you can see, our picture came in very large. We are going to need to do some resizing to that. Um, so I've zoomed out so I can see all of this. Um, and then we are going to take the picture. And if you are looking in your textbook, um, it ends, or it, I'm sorry, it kind of starts to see dry hands well so right here where the well is that's about where the left side of that picture is going to be and then in the d and dryer is about where the, where the right side is so um it's always best to go from a corner um and you'll want to have the two-headed arrow um, if you have the four-headed arrow then you're just going to move the picture so you can go from any corner you want and I'm just going to kind of try to get close to where the L and the D um, are there. So if it looks something like that, then hopefully everything has popped back up on the one screen. I'm sorry, to one page for you. Um, says it should have a height of about two inches and a width of about three. So what you can do is you can come up here on when you have a picture or a graphic that you have inserted into a document. and that graphic is selected then you will have a new toolbar uh, tab that comes up here on the ribbon so it's called picture format if that is a selected um, tab then you'll be able to come all the way over to the right end and see the height and width so my height is 1.98 my width is 2.97 close enough to two and two inches or three and three inches so I'm just going to leave that alone um, but you could change it here to oops um, to two inches 
and then when you tab it's automatically going to change the other one to three because it stays um, proportional um, so you can just type those in on that size if you need to make yours closer to the two and three inches um, all right so we are going to apply what's called a picture style to our picture um, so if you remember when I was showing you a little bit about the home ribbon and the styles that we have here well these are styles for the fonts and colors and things like that but when we're working with um, a picture we have what's called picture styles and so each one of these are preset. Um, this is a simple frame that's white. This is a beveled matte white. So all of these have different names for them. Um, we are wanting to use the snip diagonal corner white. And um, in your textbook, it usually does a pretty good job of identifying what that one looks like. So um, it has the snip diagonal corners white um, minus in your textbook it's located in the first column the third row down uh, mine is located in the fourth column the second row down so just kind of depends on which um, how your your um, tablet and um, word document are displayed so we still have our picture selected and we want to apply what's called a picture effect you will find that we do this quite a bit we'll have something selected we'll either apply a picture border or a picture effect um, or, or multiples of those um, so while we have our picture selected we'll go into the picture effects and then we are going to choose shadow and so right now no shadow is selected we are going to go down to the perspective section and we are going to choose it looks like the first option which is perspective upper left okay so once we have that we're going to click somewhere in the document to deselect that Now we're going to enhance the page by putting a um, border, a colored border around it. Um, so um, they have us go in and change our theme colors. So remember earlier we changed the theme, but we didn't change the colors. We just accepted the colors that came with them. Well, we are going to change the colors. So we'll go back to our design tab. And then over here in the color section, we are going to choose blue 2. So we'll do blue 2. And you'll notice that everything has changed. So, But we had to do that before we do our page border because when we get ready to put our page border in, then we need to have the correct color available. So I'm still on the design tab. I'm still on the design tab. All the way over here at the, the right edge, you'll see it says page borders. So we can click on that. So we are going to go to the, um, we want to make sure that when you're in the borders and shading that you are in the page borders tab. And then we are going to click the box setting. Uh, so right now it's set to none. We're going to choose the box setting. Then when we see the color, we're going to click on that. And we are going to choose turquoise accent 3, darker 25%. So here's turquoise, accent three, darker 25%. And that's what I want. Right, so then I can click the OK button and I've got a border around my um, 
document. But I think I missed something here. So I'm going to go back into my page borders because I missed the width. We're supposed to change the width. So, um, all right, so here I am at page border. I got the box. The color is turquoise. Oh, and the style is Um, let me get to this one. And then we want this to be three point. I think that's all. So we'll say okay to that, and that makes it look a little bit better around there. Okay, this next section is section 1-8C to change spacing before and after paragraphs. This is a section that many, 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 many students fail um, to get correct. And um, I think that a lot of times they just don't remember where they are supposed to go to find this. So I'm going to show you there's a couple of different places you can go to change the spacing before or after um, paragraphs. Um, Microsoft Word, a wonderful, wonderful company that they are, has done something just really crazy. Um, back when I learned to type on a typewriter, you would get to the end of the row, you would press enter, go back to or press return I'm sorry you go back to the other side of the page and you had one line of text right below the other well I guess Microsoft Word people didn't think that was good enough so they have added at the end of each paragraph um, some additional space so you'll see here that it says remove space after paragraph if I have that deselected, you'll notice that there is more room between the S and in spreading and then word the next word how. So if I go remove the space, you'll see how it pops up. Microsoft Word also has the spacing set at 1.15. So not only are we 1.15 instead of 1, um, but in addition to that, then they add this additional space at the end of a paragraph. So it's not after every line, but it's after every paragraph. Um, so what we are going to do is um, we are going to adjust the spacing that we see before and after some of the, these paragraphs. And we can do that by using the line spacing option here. And... Um, just choosing the remove the space after. Um, the other option that we can do is um, cancel. Where it has the line spacing options, you can click on that. And then you will find in the spacing section. This is before and after a paragraph. Um, and so I'll show you how you can adjust those. And a third way that you can do that is open up the layout tab up here and you'll see the spacing before and after is set to zero and eight point. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get that changed and one that's going to help things be able to get spaced out a little bit better on our um, flyer here. So we want our insertion point um, in the paragraph that is just the word how. So we'll click on that, uh, make sure our layout tab is selected. In the spacing after, um, we are going to decrease the um, spacing after. So We might have to click it a couple times to get it to display to zero. And then we're going to put our insertion point um, in the next paragraph, which is the word when. And um, 
we're also going to make that be zero. And then we are going to go to the signature line. And here we're going to add some space above um, the signature line. And this just gives it a little bit more um, definition to stand out at the bottom. So um, we're going to be in the signature line somewhere. And then we'll come up to the spacing before. And we're going to set that to 12 point. The next section, 1-8D, has you change the document properties. Um, this is a nice thing to know how to do um, if you are someone who saves a lot of documents and maybe need to do some searching for documents. Um, it has you go into the backstage view, so you click the file um, tab, and then um, if you go to the info, you will see here that... Um, the, the properties are listed over here, and you can go into the advanced properties and make some changes there. I am not going to have you guys do that for our purposes. Um, they don't typically grade on that, so um, hopefully we'll be okay. Um, the next section has you save the existing document with the same name, um, so that's not a big deal. And then they go through closing your document. Um, WD1-9 goes over correcting errors and revising documents. Um, so one thing you need to keep in mind is that there are three different types of changes that can be made. There are additions, so you're adding something to it, deletion, so you have to take something out, or modification, so you may just have something there that you need to, to make a few changes to. So, um, All right, so they have you close the document, they have you open a document, um, and then um, in our open document, let me go back here to this. Um, okay. So we're just going to save that. Um, this has you do a zoom. Which I don't think we need to worry about zooming. Um, inserting text. They do have you go. Um, and before the word and. I'm sorry. Between the word and and apply. Um, so we're going to type the word then. Maybe if I get on the right keys. So I'll type the word then. Um, so running water and then apply soap. So you've added that new word. You're going to want to check it for um, spacing to make sure you didn't get two spaces before or after that. Um, the next section talks about cutting, copying, and pasting. Um, one thing you need to know um, when you cut or copy anything, it goes to the clipboard. So you can always go back there and open your clipboard and, and insert it. Um, so they have us go to the very beginning of this. And then we are going to um, double click the word then. And then we can just hit cut up here on the home ribbon. Or you can control X if you'd rather do that. Um, so then if we select the word clean, um, we are going to So I have it selected, and I want to copy it, um, and then I am going to come down here using a, in front of the T and towel, 
And if I control V or paste that in there, now I have, as well as using a clean towel, um, okay, um, what else do we have in here? Oh, the paste options menu, you probably know how to do that. Okay, the drag and drop. Um, what we are going to do is we are going to take down here in the wind section. Um, the before, during, and after preparing food is supposed to be the first item in our, our bulleted list here. So we have this selected, um, and you will want to grab that paragraph sign at the end of it. If you don't, there's just some adjustments we have to make, but it's really not that big of a deal. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do drag and drop editing. So we have our text selected, but we want to drag it and drop it to a new position in our um, document here. So with it selected, we're going to click, uh, we're going to right click, and then we're going to drag, and you'll see this little eye beam bouncing around here. So I'm going to put that um, between before the A and after, and it should just be, I think I did, I think I held something down wrong on my mouse a little bit there. So now when is before, during, and after, and then after all the other, after, after, after. Um, shows you how to switch to read mode, to print layout mode. Um, uh, it does have you go through printing. You guys are not going to need to print anything, and if you do, you're going to know how to do that on your computer anyway. Um, there is a help section in here that tells you how to go through help and use that, hopefully a little more efficiently. Um, there's also showing you how to use the help pane. And I think that's all. Um, okay. Um, so we will save this. And then we will, um, it's usually a good idea to close your document before you try to submit it in, um, in the Cengage MindTap website. Um, people, people don't close out of it all the way and they are still successful in, um, submitting their projects, but it's, it's kind of a good idea and you really, really need to do it when you get to access. So I'm just going to close this document for right now. And then I'm going to come back to my Cengage Mind Tap and I just logged into this a little bit earlier, so it should be good to go. We'll see. Um, so I'm going to go back to my Word um, folder, then I'm going to open up my Word Module 1, and then I'm going to go to my textbook project here. I'm going to click my Start button, and here's where I'll click, and then I'll go navigate to where my document is stored. It's not there. It's in documents, sorry. Okay, so this should be it. And I'll click the OK button. You should get a green check mark here that shows your um, file name is correct. Um, you also, once we submit this, We'll have a few more green check marks come up that it's scanned it for a virus, the file format and the file size. All that's great. Good. This is where we'll click to get our graded summary. Probably not going to get such green marks. Um, now this is the um, report. You'll see down here at the, at the very end of this, it says report. Um, so that's the one I want to use to, um, to um, go from where my mistakes are. I'm going to use it to help correct um, to go to get a try to get a better score. So I'm just going to hit save here. And then that downloaded my um, report for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. Um, so I have an 88 out of 100. Um, 
on the school computers, on my computer, anytime I download something, I have to do this enable editing. I encourage students to not do the enable editing when they are having to work from um, a report that is found um, at our, our MindTap site. SAM site. So, um, and the reason I do that is because if you don't enable editing, then you're not going to make any, you're not going to be able to make changes to it. And if I scroll down here far enough, you will see that here is the actual document that I submitted. And the reason I don't have you do the enable editing here is because you're not able to make any changes to this. All you're able to do is read the, um, the information about the descriptors that, uh, or about the, um, sections that, or the parts that you got wrong. So anyway, so this is telling me that the document should be formatted using um, triple all borders. Okay, so I just grabbed the wrong border option there. Um, so I can go back and, and make those changes. But I don't want to make them on my report because I can't submit my report. I have to submit the document that was the original file name. So what I would do is I would come up here and I would do open, which I don't have to do because here it is, the last one I worked on. Um, so then I would just need to go back and make sure that everything matched up. Um, so if I go into the borders, and there's a couple different ways you can get that, but since we went into it from the design tab, I'll do that. And then I'm supposed to get the triple, which is always difficult for me because it never really does a good job of telling you uh, what it is that you're supposed to get. So, and that was set on three. I don't think that's correct. Um, so what you have to do is you have to go back and forth between your Word documents. So this is my, um, the one that has the yellow line is the enable editing. So I'll go back here and I'll look and so the text before, during, and after preparing food should be entered into the document. So I probably have a typing error somewhere on that. Um, preparing food. I don't know what I did wrong there. But anyway, um, so you just have to go through and make the changes to that. Resave it, and then you come back and... You, um, Submit it again, and then you see how you uh, did with your second score. Then you can do the same thing for a third score if you need to. So um, hopefully that will be very helpful to you.